Ahoy, mateys. This time we're sailing into the stormy seas of Bar Rescue. Specifically, the unforgettable episode featuring the infamous Pirate's Tavern. Picture a pirate-themed bar where the staff not only dress as pirates, but live the pirate life a bit too authentically, right down to plundering their own business. Welcome back to Reality TV Rescues, where we break down the wildest episodes of your favorite business turnaround shows. This is one of the most infamous episodes in Bar Rescue history. Not only what happened during the episode, but what happens after the cameras stop rolling. Does the bar keep sailing, and are they able to keep their ship afloat, or did they go down with it? We've got the exclusive post-episode updates you're craving for. Get ready to hoist the anchor, because this is one episode recap you won't want to miss. At the start of this voyage, we meet Pirate's Tavern, a Silver Spring, Maryland bar opened in 2007 by Tracy Rebello, who is a massive pirate fan. As such, the Washington, D.C. area bar attracted a small clientele of fans and employees who assumed the role of a pirate, like One-Eyed Mike, whose name is no exaggeration. If the theme already showed Tracy's lack of experience, it got worse when she assigned her husband, Giussiano, to the kitchen, a chef with zero culinary experience. In addition to that, the rest of the staff takes their character parts a bit too seriously, alienating non-pirate clientele. After five years, Tracy has accumulated a debt of $900,000, and unless she finds a pirate treasure, her bar is going to sink soon. So she decides to call John Taffer, who first sends his drop-dead gorgeous wife, Nicole, to recon the place, since she'll be treated as a regular customer. Or so he thought, because Nicole is treated wonderfully by the staff, so she deduces that they know her identity, which is why they are being so friendly to her. Fortunately, Taffer had a backup plan. Bill and Jen Rodenheiser, the owners of The Bone, a Massachusetts bar he helped in the past. They even go in dressed like pirates. Well, you know what they say, when in Rome. As Bill and Jen enter the bar, no one is there to greet them. They are left standing at the entrance for several minutes, waiting. They finally decide no one is coming to seat themselves. Even once seated, no one is coming to bring the menus, even though the place looks pretty empty to me. Oh, just gonna seat yourselves whatever the f you like, are you? For drinks, the couple decides to start with the most piratey drink of all time, grog. But they say it tastes pretty bad. Then they get the fresh catch of the day, a fresh mahi, which actually turned out to be frozen and pretty nasty according to Bill. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure real pirates ate fresh fish and at least had decent grog to drink. After that disappointing experience, they reported their opinions to Taffer with emphasis on the staff being weird and the food being horrible. Finally, Taffer introduces himself to the bar, asking Tracy about her fondness for the pirate theme. Mm. It's sort of the ultimate adult fantasy. Dangerous and sexy. Mm, okay. She hasn't drawn a salary in six years. She had to move back in with her parents, living in their basement with her teenage daughter and her much younger than her boy toy husband, Juciano. She does try justifying it all by saying that the few customers they got love the bar. At such a response, John confronts her about terrible drinks and lying about the menu. He asks her if she is ashamed. However, she says she isn't. This upsets John and the yelling starts. Hearing this go down, Juciano yells from across the bar that the food is good and then calls John Taffer an asshole. Your food is the worst I've ever seen. Instead of accepting the criticism, Juciano kept yelling at him. But in a competition like that, I don't think anyone can beat Taffer. She had to buy them your dinner tonight because you blew it. At least that served to make Tracy understand that her business was failing. So Taffer can now start on the rescue plan. As usual, Taffer tells it like it is. He tells Tracy, five years of your life and a million dollars come down to the next five days. He then gathers the staff together to make it clear to them that the pirate theme isn't working, but notices Archer, one of the pirates, grinning at everything he is saying. So Taffer decides to call him out on it, in which Archer smugly retorts to John that there is a grown man 
yelling at the top of his lungs at people like their children. In which Taffer responds with, You're dressed like a six-year-old child. I wouldn't talk about it. Oh, zing. Nice one, Taffer. As part of the relaunch, Taffer calls Josh Capon, an executive chef at two successful restaurants. Josh has a lot of work ahead of him because the Pirate's Tavern menu is 18 pages long and Juiciano, well, he's not a chef at all. To test his skills, Juiciano prepares him a dish that even he can't eat because of how spicy it is. I guess he failed that test. As for the bar, John turns to Elaine Duke, a mixologist with a more than remarkable career. Before doing anything, Elaine observes the bar's working dynamic, discovering that most drinks were sugar on top of sugar, plus cheap booze. Both Elaine and Josh conclude that Pirate's Tavern needs a new direction entirely, especially since the bar is in the middle of several corporate buildings, full of employees who leave hungry but don't want to eat with pirates. In total, Taffer estimates there are about 15,000 office workers around the bar, so he recommends Tracy get rid of the pirate theme to attract that clientele. Although it was a million dollar idea, the owner doesn't want to take the soul out of her business. You want to be a pirate or do you want to send your daughter to college? That's a good point. Tracy is skeptical, especially since Taffer wants to completely kill off the pirate thing altogether. But she ultimately ends up accepting Taffer's reforms after he reminds her of her million dollar debt. Of course, now they have to convince the rest of the pirate gang so very delicately to not hurt their feelings. Tracy indicates to them that they need less of the pirate theme going forward. Not less. Pirates is dead. Subtle as always. Tired of Taffer's criticism, Archer decides to storm out of the bar. He even refuses to be filmed outside. Mike has a more sentimental take on the matter, confessing that for a guy like him, it's very complicated to find employment elsewhere, and that Pirate's Tavern had been his family until now. Seeing such passion in him, Taffer assures him that he will succeed at the new bar, convincing Mike. The rest of the staff, while still feeling skeptical, at least seem somewhat willing to change. The next day, Tracy and her employees discover that Taffer's team is already removing the pirate decorations from their place. Meanwhile, Elaine teaches new cocktails to the bartenders, with a lot of fresh fruits that give the drinks a natural sweetness. But the bar is still missing something else, good customer service. And that's why Taffer summons Jesse Barnes, one of the best service trainers in the country. While testing the waiters, Jesse realizes that Mike is still talking like a pirate. She tries to get him not to talk like a pirate for one. I'm, I'm just... Do you want me to do it? Like, this is just me. He may have trouble understanding orders, but I admire Mike's enthusiasm. Finally, it's time for the soft opening, and the bar is packed with customers like never before. But for that very reason, the staff has trouble serving everyone, causing many customers to leave disappointed. We are missing our drink. Me too. Meanwhile, Juiciano is ignoring all the problems and Josh's advice. Taffer himself had to intervene to remind him to work for the sake of his wife's business though Juiciano took it as an insult and decides to leave the bar. On the other hand, Tracy goes out to run after her husband, leaving her waiters with a sea of customers to attend to. Under pressure, Mike drops a few drinks. He looks like he is going to lose it, and he almost scares me a little the way he is holding that knife. Faced with this situation, Taffer gathers his experts to formulate a plan and motivate the staff, especially Mike, to perform at their best. Thus, the bartenders begin to prepare multiple drinks at the same time, satisfying the customers. Jason was also able to increase the efficiency of the kitchen, earning many compliments on his excellent food. At the end of that day, a moderately successful one, Taffer congratulates the staff for their efforts, especially Mike, noting that he can become a leader for the servers. Juiciano also decides to return and attends the meeting, where they make it clear to him that he cannot run the kitchen. 36 hours later, the new bar is ready. Now, you know how on most of these business restoration shows, the staff usually really likes the redesign of their business. However, this time, not so much. When they first see the new sign out front and the new name of the corporate bar and grill, they gasp. Some of them even have some more choice words that I won't repeat here. It clearly has a new theme, in fact, it is a 180-degree shift with a focus on an executive theme 
to attract local office workers for their lunch menu. The staff wasn't too convinced about that. Even though they detest the exterior, when they go inside the bar, some of them do start to like the changes Taffer made. It looks modern and elegant inside. As for the patio that was out back gathering dust, it's now a cozy place that's perfect for a group of customers. Among other changes, the 18-page menu is gone to make way for a smaller one, focused on simple dishes for lunch and dinner. In addition, Taffer introduces a smart bar, an automated bar that can create a perfect drink in less than 10 seconds, which will help the staff when there are too many customers. Seriously, why don't more bars have that? The other device is an Elixin Draftmaster table, with which customers can pour a beer for themselves. I mean, what could possibly go wrong with that? I'm just joking. That is another time-saving device that the bar should be able to use. Now, it's time to test all the revamps in the relaunch, and the staff is up to the challenge. Who knew that less than a week ago, they were dressed like pirates doing crazy things around that bar? Even Giussiano was performing well in his new secondary role in the kitchen. Everyone was doing great, except for Tracy, who misses her pirate tavern. In fact, when a customer tells her she enjoys the new place, she tells the customer that it is not what she wants to hear. She continues to badmouth the changes Taffer made. Yeah, she said it to a customer like it was nothing. So Taffer tries to show her that her bar is making more profit than ever, though she doesn't rule out the possibility of returning to the previous theme. Unfortunately, that's exactly what she ended up doing, reverting into the Pirate's Tavern once again. That marked a milestone for the show, as it was the first time a rescued bar returned to its starting point by choice that quickly. And they did it without remorse, as a staff made a music video called Pirate's Revenge, whose lyrics called John Taffer a bastard, who instead of rescuing them, only disrespected them. They show them shooting up the corporate bar and grill sign, then after decide to burn it like an effigy. The video plays their song as the sign burns. I recommend you listen to the whole song. It's pretty funny, but it also shows how ungrateful the staff was to Taffer's efforts. Beyond that, how did Pirate's Tavern 2.0 do? Well, pretty bad. With just 2.6 stars on Yelp, its profile is full of negative reviews, complaining about the terrible customer service, that the staff was back to their weird habits, that the food wasn't good either, that they didn't know how to mix drinks, and a lot of other bad things. But the one that stood out the most was that the place was dirty. Still, there are some Yelpers who did enjoy their experience at the Pirate's Tavern, but most seem to be pirate fanatics, so that may explain a lot. To no one's surprise, things got complicated for Tracy in early 2015, as she still had a huge debt, and her family was still living in her parents' basement. So, she sat down with Giussiano and her daughter from a previous marriage to think about the possibility of calling Taffer back to rescue her business a second time. That idea seemed indignant to Giussiano, even though Tracy's daughter is against the whole pirate thing and wants the business to do what every business should do, make money. Tracy reveals in another clip that the corporate bar theme only lasted the day of the filming and that she took the sign down the next day. She also painted over the changes John made to the interior and went back to the pirate theme. Oh, and Giussiano had this to say to John as one final parting gift. I think Johnny Taffer's really stupid. <laughs> because of those kind of statements, Taffer didn't want to help them again, feeling that they disrespected him in a way that no other owner had ever done before. Speaking of Pirate's Tavern's closure, Tracy made it official on the restaurant's Facebook page in March of 2015. According to her, the bar rescue team contacted her for a re-rescue, though instead they filled her bar with fake customers and forced Giussiano to say bad things about Taffer as if he was the villain. In the end, Tracy states that they were victims of reality TV and decided not to renew their lease, as they were tired of the bad reviews, acts of vandalism, and prank calls, all because of the show. Although strangely enough, in mid-2016, Taffer agreed to host the Rebellos for an interview, in which they revealed that they had to close the bar, but that the staff had been doing well, especially Mike, who got married to one of the other pirates. They also expressed their desire to open a new bar in Florida called Bar Refuge, where Giussiano promises to stay away from the kitchen. 
As for what happened to the original bar's location, it's now occupied by a bar called The Republic Garden, with 3.2 stars on Yelp and 4.2 on Google. For their part, the Rebellos moved to Melbourne, Florida to open Bar Refuge in 2016, a normal bar that Tracy aspired to be the cheers of the neighborhood, as she described it. It seems they learned quite a bit about management from their previous bar, as the Bar Refuge enjoys 4.1 stars on Yelp, and as many positive reviews from the Rebellos' time as owners. Wait, they sold that business? Yes, the Rebellos decided to sell Bar Refuge, though not for financial reasons. They stated they did so, so they could, quote, create eclectic art, interior renovations, sculptures, and murals. The new owners of Bar Refuge ended up selling it a few years later, and the place is currently occupied by Drew's Brews and Grill, a mix between a restaurant and a bar. In an interview with Bro Bible, Taffer himself weighed in on what went wrong with pirates. He goes on to explain, I created a restaurant for downtown Silver Spring, Maryland that would do about a half a million dollars a year at lunch. I had all the statistics in the show. The town is nearly empty at night. I want pirates to be profitable, to be successful. When I left, within three hours they took the sign down and they never opened for lunch, not once. The concept that I created never opened for five minutes, never opened for lunch. The rebuilt Pirate's Tavern ignored lunch, ignored the demographics, ignored the potential of the show. Believe it or not, despite that, Taffer actually did another pirate-themed bar later on on Bar Rescue that he named Bonnie and Reed's, despite never thinking he would ever go back to a pirate theme again. It just goes to show you that it is not the theme he disliked per se, but the location and demographic that counts. Bonnie and Reed's is in Hollywood, Florida, where it would fit in no problem compared to the corporate location Pirates was surrounded by. Although a lot of fans of the show have rightly pointed out that the corporate theme and logo was a bit too much in the opposite direction, and that that would never appeal to the Pirate staff. User DarkGTX on Reality TV Updates had a good idea when he suggested that Taffer should have redesigned it as a seafood restaurant named Swordfish Bar and Grill which would have been not too far away from their pirate roots, while at the same time being able to appeal to a more upscale clientele. A win-win that would meet in the middle. Regardless, to this day, Tracy and Druciano are still living together in Florida, and judging by their Facebook photos, it looks like they've been doing well and have stayed close to their greatest passion, the sea.